Do you want me to upgrade that to a one-way trip, sir? The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. You can take it. You're a champion. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth, and with it, an ungodly headache. A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound, a clarion call from hell. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. Warning, warning, the necktie is no longer contained. What you have in your hand is a fantastically colorful tie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. It's just a little hangover-induced photosensitivity. Don't overreact. Little black spots dance on your retinas. It's almost pleasurable. The blades come squeaking to a halt. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there. 
underneath the soft vapour. Really, all recollection of the person you are, the people in your life and even the world you're in has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Behold. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? It appears you're also dead. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? You should check yourself for a pulse, superstar. From here it looks like a cadaverous spasm. Good call. Go ahead and try something if you like. Or, you know, stop staring into the mirror. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. It's too late. Like an image on film. The expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. A cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. Hello, officer. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips.
Uh, no. There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. Because you're a police officer, sir. Okay, cool. I won't. She means it. She wouldn't defy authority, however sweaty and bloated it may look. Okay. Whoa. Something wants to come out of you. A bit of vomit? Thankfully, you keep it down, because your body does not control you. Sir, you've been here for three days. On official police business, as you put it. Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. Try the expression. Come on, why are you still doing this? Alcohol raises testosterone levels, especially in men. The levels remain elevated after inebriation ends and the pain begins. You seek comfort. It's only natural. She puts out her cigarette. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. And now, it never stops. Goodbye. You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray. Light it up and smoke the living shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs>